This is an important principle that might surprise some people when I say this. No food heals you. Turmeric doesn't heal you. Reishi mushroom doesn't heal you. Vitamin D doesn't heal you. Broccoli and kale don't heal you. Your body heals itself. Your body will use these foods, these nutrients, these herbs for building blocks or to change the environment that gives your body what it needs to heal itself. But this is why fasting is so powerful is essentially your organs are always regenerating or trying to, but if it's working all the time, it never gets to regenerate. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. It's Almost 30. It's Lindsay and Krista. We're so glad you're here. So thankful. We are a wellness podcast in general, but we go much deeper than that. 360 Wellness, hopefully just inspiring you, making you laugh, making you feel less alone in every aspect of your life. Yeah. So we provide all the information that you need to up-level, to grow, and to feel more like your authentic self on the podcast. And then we also provide a community. Almost 30 Nation is our listeners. They are our friends and they meet up all over the world in communities where you are. So from Singapore to everyone (laughs) they're meeting and they're connecting so uh, make sure to check out the almost 30 nation uh, group on facebook and you can learn more about how to meet up with some listeners where you are yeah truly they are the best and it's so nice when they reach out just kind of chatting about anything and everything whether it's like an episode that they related to um something that either of us said that resonated we read everything and it means so much to us we really want to keep the conversation going um this podcast started with a conversation so always feel comfortable to reach out to us yeah i just got a dm it was so sweet it says the overwhelming amount of love i got in this post on the facebook page is so incredible i'm crying because these ladies are amazing thank you for this platform mm. so people you know from small things to big things people connect with one another there and if you guys have been listening or following almost 30 for a while you know that we have been on tour so we kicked off our tour in austin texas earlier this year and we are going all the way through you know la live show in december we're going to be in 13 cities with, you know, 20 or so events. And it is a labor of love, truly. The wheels are falling off a little bit today, but, you know, we, <laughs> we, we press on. And, you know, it's little, little messages and little reminders that we get about the work that we do and about the events that we have that really keep us going. And there was someone that we met at our event in London um, that we wanted to just talk about and that we wanted to share the email from her and following to our meeting. And her name is Floor. Flo. Thank you for everything and all of it. Dear Kristen Lindsay, for a long while, I've been wanting to write you and tell you about all the things you have done for me. I wanted to express my gratitude at the event in London, but I felt so overwhelmed I completely forgot. I walked out and realized I didn't even snap a photo with you guys. I actually like that because then it means that people are really present. So mm-hmm. I actually really enjoy mm-hmm. that. I started listening to your podcast in November, about three weeks after starting a new job. About two months months after, my sister suddenly passed away. I was driving back and forth to work three hours a day and the music couldn't keep me awake. I heard about podcasts before, but never really listened to them. After discovering your podcast, I started driving, enjoying my drives and man, oh man, has life changed for me. I felt like I was driving around with two of my best friends. And to be honest, none of my friends discuss the things you do no matter how much I would like them to. My sister's passing has made me realize that getting through life is not enough for me. I never quite realized I was capable of more, never quite in touch with my emotions, although I would say I knew myself quite well. 
Now I'm at the point where I feel like you never really know yourself and we're constantly changing, but you can be aware of yourself. Ever since listening to you both, I'm able to feel more present. I've started meditating, manifesting, yoga, trusting crystals, and I've started my own business as a side hustle. Things I've always admired in other people, but somehow labeled as not for me. I've even had an appointment to have my hormonal IUD removed, (laughs) which makes me laugh because that's definitely a symptom of listening to us. (laughs) Every product you recommend, I feel is worth trying. And that's because you are very reliable and trustworthy. Working in online marketing, I'm not one to be easily influenced, but you guys have the best fucking influence. Excuse my language. When I saw that you guys were coming to London, I didn't hesitate for a minute. After everything you guys ha- you guys have changed for me, I had to go. So I decided to buy tickets on Saturday for Milana. At first, a friend couldn't come, but she told me that I should go. And my experience with Milana was truly mind-blowing. I never really thought energy healing would work for me, but the breath work took me away. I've shared some of my experiences directly after, but things have been weird since that day. After the event, after the healing, I felt exhausted. I was thinking about what I saw and experienced and I started doubting it. I felt like I saw my sister and I felt like, and I felt her, but how on earth was I going to explain this in words to my mother, my sister, my boyfriend, and my younger sister? I started journaling. And when I boarded the train that day after, and I didn't stop until I arrived in Brussels two and a half hours after journaling, and I still wasn't done. I've been feeling uncomfortable, but I've been able to get through it all. I was eventually able to tell my mom and my experience about my experience and we cried together. I can go on and just tell you about myself as I think I know about as much as I think I know about you, but that would be a long email. So I'll just drop some facts that may may resonate with you. I want to thank you for so much for all you've done, the podcast, the community and events. In London, I said I would try to come to NY meetups and we could be in the States then. KL and crew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing beautiful, wonderful things that make the world better. Take it all in. And what was so special about this email is that Flo was there. And so she came, she traveled in from from Brussels. And I don't know how we got to talking about it, but that's really the way things go with us and with our events is that they get very deep very quickly. And she mentioned her sister passing very recently and that this was something that was you know really hard for her. And... During the meditation, she was able to connect with her and to see her and to like crack wide open and feel her. It was so powerful. And it was just interesting that we were talking about her sister passing earlier. And then to have that, her come through in the meditation was just really powerful. Yeah, it was powerful Powerful for everyone that kind of knew her story. She was so open about it. And something she said about like, I never thought I would be someone to do this. I never thought... And that's kind of like something that we see a lot, you know, where women are told that, you know, this thing is really weird or this practice is like too woo woo or whatever it is. And we just, you know, sweetly kind of like comply and are like, yeah, I guess that's not for me just because, you know, the majority are not partaking. But, you know, I really am so grateful that we can create this space, but then also more so that our attendees can create this space for one another to experience these things that they never thought that they could um, enjoy or get something from because really they're not thinking, you know, like the thought is out of it. It's really they're living and moving and communicating through their hearts, you know, not overthinking anything. So I just like, I hear that from her. I can't even imagine like how in her head she must be after losing a sister, you know, just thinking about all the things she should have said or done, you know, like just so much. So yeah, I mean, that was really beautifully put. And such a special note. We'll keep that forever. Yeah. Thanks, Flo. That means so much. And just a note on our events, you know, you are stepping into a space with awesome, supportive, loving people, and they are super powerful. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys on tour this year. Yeah. It's a good reminder for us because, as we said just before, that it's not always (laughs) perfect behind the scenes. It can be really, really stressful. And, the logistics of very minor details to bigger details can go awry in 2.5 seconds and it could really stress us out. And and so like these moments where we can really remember the why behind what we do and who's coming and 
what is really important is is really good for us. So yeah. Thank you. Completely. And it's not about, you know, it is the details, but yeah. it's not about that. It's like just being there to facilitate something like that happening for her. So totally. That was amazing. For our events upcoming, if you're interested mm-hmm. in coming, they are awesome and transformational. <laughs> Maybe they won't be that crazy. Uh, we have LA June 20th with Brie Melanson. It is a breathwork type class or we might do live channeling. We're deciding. So if you have any thoughts, DM us. If you guys want to have it be live channeling or breathwork, let us know. I'm kind of thinking live channeling. Yeah. Which means you get messages from spirit. And then we have our July 9th through 12th retreat, which is sold out at this point, I think pretty much. And then we have our next event happening, the live show in uh, San Francisco, Mm -hmm. which is going to be amazing. That's with Lacey Phillips. If you guys know Lacey Phillips of 2B Magnetic, you know how incredible she is. So we're looking forward to that. And then I'm excited about this episode in particular because we have an event happening with Dr. Axe and the Ancient Nutrition team. Yeah, this is going to be an incredible event in Nashville. Dr. Axe was in LA. So we got to chat with him in person, which was such a delight. Dayton, Dayton baby. (laughs) Ohio. He's an Ohio boy. So I know, cut from the same cloth. (laughs) But he started a functional medicine center in Nashville and it grew to be one of the most renowned clinics in the world. He's a doctor of chiropractic and a certified doctor of natural medicine and clinical nutritionist. And he founded DrAxe.com. So this is a super popular website (laughs) with everything from healthy recipes to incredible, valuable articles on health, nutrition, gut health, heart health, hormones, mental health, anything and everything. He is just a wealth of information, um, easily digestible. He even gives like DIY remedies and, you know, kind of squashing myths in the wellness and health space. So just someone we really, really trust. His new book is now available as well. It's called Keto Diet. Not sure if you heard of the Keto Diet, but uh, he is your expert, your guru for all things keto. Yeah. And in the Keto Diet book, there is Keto for Vegans. So he has different variations of how someone could apply the Keto Diet to their life. If you're vegetarian, vegan, not vegan, what have you. And it's a really easy to read book. It's beautiful. It's got everything in there. And what I really like about Dr. Axe, besides the fact that he's so successful and integrated um, Eastern and Western medicines, is that he speaks really well to the female audience. And I was really impressed with his conversation and um, answering of our questions around hormone health. I feel like he has a great understanding of women and women anatomy and all of those things. And it seems simple and it seems trite, but there is a finesse to that. And I felt really safe in having those conversations with him. And he is a wealth of knowledge. This interview is incredible. So get your notebooks out for all things related to you know health, wellness, nutrition, hormone health, all of that kind of thing. This is, this is for you. Yeah. And our event just for anyone who is in the Nashville area is September 19th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And this will be everything related to your gut microbiome and hormone health. So come with questions. If you're in the area, definitely come alone or bring friends, whichever. But this is going to be a really incredible, valuable event. And we're just ecstatic to be partnering with them. Yeah. The event space is stunning. It's so, so beautiful. And we're so excited to be in Nashville. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. So you can get the Keto Diet book by Dr. Axe. It's available now. They work with Ancient Nutrition. I love the Keto Cocoa from Ancient Nutrition. So they have some great products there as well. And then draxe.com is the website. Woo. All right. Enjoy this episode. If you love it, send it to friends, share it on Instagram. We will repost. We love hearing from you. Um, And if you haven't already and you're called to rate and review on iTunes, it means so much to us. And we will read a review on the other side of this episode. Thank you for everything. We love you guys. Enjoy. Love you. This San Diego-based health food company is best known for starting the avocado oil craze. What is Chosen Foods? Uh, Chosen Foods, you know it. You've heard it before from us. If you're a longtime listener of Almost 30, they are our go-to for dressings, avocado oil sprays. I mean, you cannot go wrong. Their ingredients are pure and natural. It's real food. 
It's real food with clean label ingredients. Um, we are obsessed with their avocado oil sprays right now. I just sprayed the Italian herb all over my cauliflower rice, which was absolutely divine. I also use the cinnamon spray to make pancakes. I oil the pan and then the pancakes have a little cinnamon taste to them. I mean, you cannot go wrong. They also have their goddess dressings out now. Check them out on their website, chosenfoods.com. And we're so excited to offer you, get this, 50% off your order of $10 or more. So that's chosenfoods.com slash almost 30. And then use the promo code almost 30 during checkout. So I'll say that one more time, chosenfoods.com slash almost 30. And then use the promo code almost 30 at checkout for 50% off your purchase of $10 or more. Well, welcome, Josh. Yeah, so excited to have you here. Really excited to hang. Long time coming. Our community is huge fans. Awesome. We are health and wellness on iTunes, and you know our content runs the gamut of topics: meditation, health, wellness, culture, a lot of different things. But we find that our community really loves our health and wellness uh, specific podcast. So it was perfect timing that you're here, and you have such a great name in the industry. So, so glad to have you. And holistic as well. I think like what we've found to like being in LA, we try all the things and it can get a little bit overwhelming and we're doing all the woo woo things as well. So to know that you incorporate just looking at the body, mind, body, spirit, um, and how to achieve that optimal health in that way is kind of what we're, what we're after. Mm -hmm. I love it. Did you go to school in Kentucky? Uh, yeah, for undergrad. I went to, I'm from Ohio. So I'm from Cincinnati. Okay. I'm from yeah. Dayton. Oh, where? Uh, Troy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I used to play volleyball in like Vandalia oh, yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Dayton is like, I'm from Mason uh-huh. more so. Yeah. Is like 40 minutes away from me. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm still a big Buckeye fan. So oh, you are? a lot of family that lives back in Ohio. Really? So, yeah. What do you think that's like, how do you think being from Ohio has shaped you? You know, I think for Ohio, it's, you know, it's very, uh, well, where we grew up, Cincinnati Mm -hmm. and Dayton, it's very, it's interesting because Cleveland is a very different type of person. It's more being (laughs) from the Northeast versus Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus is very much from the Midwest. But I feel like I just, I don't really wholesome, great upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we uh, played in the streets and, Mm -hmm. you know, in, in our, in our neighborhood and didn't worry too much about people breaking in and just. But yeah, I thought it was really good for sort of shaping me as a person and grew mm-hmm. up around some great, great people. So I, th- I think Ohio people are awesome. Mm-hmm. Work ethic is good. That's it for sure. <laughs> yeah, that Midwest style. It is funny <laughs> yeah, though yeah. that last thing on Cleveland, it's so different. Like when I, I have a lot of friends in Cleveland, I'm like, wow, it's still different than, you know, where we're from. Yeah, it's it's definitely more of, yeah, Northeastern, you know, Philly, yeah. New York, yes. Boston sort of vibe from when we're yes. talking Cleveland. But uh, lots of drinking. Lots of lots, lots of drinking. drinking. Did you go through any will, like period say. where you were kind of oh yeah party loosey goosey? Yeah, you know, um, from a even from let's say like a, a health and fitness standpoint. So p- part of my story is my mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was real young in mm-hmm. junior high, and mm-hmm. at that point I got really mm-hmm. conscious about eating healthy. After that, like at fourteen years old, I really knew nothing about nutrition, but I figured out somehow that soda had to be bad. Mm-hmm. So like I stopped drinking soda at, you know, or pop as, as we call it in Ohio pop. or the, mm-hmm. you know, Midwest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, stopped drinking that at 14 years old and hardly did it after that. And and not to say I wouldn't occasionally like in college go to, you know, like I love Chick-fil-A and, and those sort of places. And I so I, love I, uh, yeah, I haven't eaten there in ages, <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, you know, I, I definitely, but over time it's just got to be sort of cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And, you know, like people ask me, Hey, what's a cheat meal for you? And like, like Chelsea and I, we eat chocolate cake and we eat, uh, you know, chocolate chip cookies, but we just make them at home, you know, mm-hmm. with yeah. almond flour, coconut flour and chocolate chips. We did go to Italy this summer. We went to, and I had a, like some, a uh, little bit of gelato there. We had some of their pizza there, but you know, it's, it, the food's still different there. You got to like, like the, uh, you know, it's all the einkorn, like we, and it's, or it's, it's sourdough, so it's been fermented, so it's real easy to digest. So even when we ate some of that stuff over there, like we felt fantastic because the food is still so much better in terms of quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when your mom, when your mom got sick, it's I think it's interesting. I guess like coming from Ohio, you know, if my my parents have had health issues, but nothing like you know your mother's cancer, that you immediately thought to clean up your eating and 
went to health and nutrition. Do you know why that is? Because from my experience, it would be like, this is an isolated inc- incidence that we cannot control and her health and wellness is not related to the cancer that is happening. Yeah. So I think for me, I had some mentors pretty early on that were really in the fitness space. And so I started working out with them. They were about eight, nine years older than me. It was a, it was a husband wife couple. And we ended up, they just taught me about fitness and nutrition. So I think just in my own mind, I started realizing health. If my mom was healthier, but the thing is, my mom was already into fitness. Like my mm-hmm. mom was my gym teacher in elementary school. She was a mm-hmm. swim instructor. So you'd look at her at 40 years old and think, hey, this, this, this lady's fit. We knew nothing about nutrition at the time. So when I started learning about nutrition, that's, you know, and th- th- this couple did that for me that, uh, you know, th- that's sort of when I made the connection. Mm. So from there, were you, were you kind of working, how old you were in middle school, right? Yeah. So from there... How how did your mom, did she get well? Like, what was that yeah. like progression like? And yeah. how did you kind of have a, a part in that? Yeah, so my child? mom, you know, when she got that cancer diagnosis when I was in junior high, she went through all the conventional medical treatment. She went and had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. You know, I still remember to this day seeing her hair fall out and just how sick she got. And eventually she was diagnosed as being cancer-free, but... I, even though she was diagnosed as cancer-free, she seemed sicker than ever because she got put on multiple medications. She struggled with depression, anxiety. She was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, chronic fatigue syndrome. She had digestive issues. I mean, she was really just sort of sick and tired all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing I remember about her growing up. And then about you know uh, years later, I'm studying to become a physician. I'm about a year away from graduating. and She's diagnosed with cancer again. And that time we decided to take an all natural route. In fact, I flew from Ohio, uh, from Florida, when I was in school back to Ohio. And we sat down, we actually prayed together and felt led to take care of her all naturally. And so she started juicing vegetables every single day. We put her on this diet called keto, keto diet, the right way, not the butter and bacon that people talk about, but actual, you know, we removed all the sugar, you know, really the only carbs she was consuming were from a little bit from berries and then a few like beets and carrots. And um, lots of healthy fats. She started doing things like turmeric and reishi mushroom, using essential oils like frankincense. Started getting different types of uh, care from practitioners, everything from chiropractic to acupuncture to lymphatic drainage massage. And we started working on her mindset. Like we, my mom, we would have her start working doing visualization where she would picture herself playing with her grandkids, bring them to Disney World. She started saying sort of like healing 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 scriptures. And she she would do this in the morning and at night. And I know this sounds like a lot, but it really wasn't that much. She changed her diet and worked on her lifestyle and mindset. And four months later, she went back and did a CT scan in Columbus, Ohio. And the oncologist called the next day and they said, this is highly unusual, but your tumors have shrunk in half. Wow. And they said, we want to see you again in nine months, went back nine months later in complete remission. So today, my mom actually turned 67 this year. Oh my god! And she f- says she feels better in her 60s and she did in her 30s and has really amazing health. So I took a lot of those things I learned with my mom and started using those in practice and, and saw great results with patients then too. What year was that? Um, that would have been in 2003. Really? Whoa. Oh wait, hold Doing- on. 2000, no, hold on. Would, sorry. 2000. And six. Okay, still. 2006. Because I just watched like Heal on Netflix. And we, you know, we've kind of seen all of these practices and truly believe in the mind body connection and how your thoughts, you know, really kind of create the reality within your body. So, like, for you to be doing that back then is pretty incredible. Yeah. You know, I spent probably thousands of hours researching and looking at what works for cancer. And so, you know, I was finding these. It wasn't on the first page of Google, let me tell you that. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. way down deep. And then I was calling doctors. I talked to a doctor in Spain who was a cancer specialist. I talked to a doctor in Tijuana, Mexico, who runs Oasis of Hope. I, I called uh, people all over the world. And so it was a blessing in disguise that I was able to learn so many things that I could then use with patients or teach people online You know, y- years later. But yeah, you know, it's funny. Like Keto is big now, but the first time I did Keto was probably... 13 years ago and wow. uh, at least. So, so you, and what was the reason you were doing keto? So I had learned about it with my mom. Yeah. So she started doing it and I thought, man, all this research I'm seeing, I'm going to do it. And I was already a fairly lean person, but I really leaned out, body fat dropped down and and I wasn't on keto all the time. I, I, I actually think keto is more, you know, I, I feel like keto is more, think about it like a long-term fast. Like keto was created 
in 1920s, John Hopkins University, they're working on children with epilepsy, mm-hmm. epileptic seizures, and they found that when they fasted, their seizures went completely away. So then they said, we need to create a diet that mimics fasting, and that's how they created the keto diet, is that your body, or it gets in a fasted state for your pancreas, where your pancreas can now heal and regenerate. That's why it's so powerful. Like The keto diet is the most effective diet for balancing insulin. And there are so many conditions today that people don't realize are due to insulin balance. For instance, the hormonal condition a lot of women struggle with, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. According to medical research, it's completely due to insulin imbalance. And so if you can balance that, PCOS can get bigger. It can actually help fertility with a lot of women. Um, I've noticed this in uh, postmenopausal women with hot flashes, premenopausal women who are looking to improve you know, uh, PMS-like symptoms. And so I, I, I've found that the keto diet can work for a lot of people, but that's only if they're doing it the right way. Because a lot of people today are doing it. I mentioned earlier, butters, bacon, and conventional burgers. And it's not yeah. the clean, anti-inflammatory healing way. Because when I did this with my mom and learned the research, I didn't even know there was like this other butter and bacon mm-hmm. version of keto. I only knew one way to do it, and that's with using whole using food as medicine the right way. Mm. So what would a you know the right way to do it look like in the ketogenic diet? Yeah. So and and just so you know, and this isn't a plug, but just just sort of giving an example. So like and I cover this in my book, Keto mm-hmm. Diet, but I actually have in the in the plan, I think there's multiple ways and ways to do keto. And so like I have like a keto plus intermittent fasting plan. I have a basic keto plan. I have a keto cancer plan. So I'll give you an example. I think a basic keto plan you want to do about 70% fat, 25% protein, 5% carbs. But I think it's important to look at the food. So the fats, I think you want to get multiple types of healthy fats. I think you want to look at getting the right omega-3s, the right saturated fats, and the right unsaturated fats. And so for omega-3s, you know, doing lots of wild-caught fish, high in EPA, DHA. So salmon, tuna, you know, halibut, you know, and the sardines, mackerel, but just healthy fish, getting those omegas, getting walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp, the other omega-3 rich foods. Seaweed actually has Mm -hmm. sometimes some DHA in it. So getting those good omegas, I would say getting the good saturated fats from coconut, uh, sustainable palm uh, oil can be be good. And then things like grass-fed butter, ghee, uh, but getting those good saturated fats. And then the good monounsaturated fats from things like uh, avocados, olives and olive oil, certain nuts and seeds, pistachios, macadamias, almonds, cashews, you know, most of the nuts and seeds, generally speaking, are pretty good. So I think those are the good sources of fat. I think and good animal fats, grass-fed beef, uh, pastures, e- e- pastured eggs would be good. And then from a protein standpoint, making sure people are getting collagen. One third of all of the protein of our own body is collagen. So for instance, our skin, hair, nails, bones, discs, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, fascia, gut lining, arterial walls, Every one of those areas is made up completely of collagen. So like our ancestors, when they ate meat-based products, they didn't just eat a chicken breast. They ate the organ meats. They ate, they would take, you know, the tissues and make broth, chicken, chicken broth mm-hmm. and beef bone broth and, and drink all these things. That's where all the collagen is. Well, today people discard, you know, discard those things and just eat the chicken breast. So because of that, our skin suffers. It doesn't look as healthy. Actually, people get cellulite a lot of times because they don't have coll- enough collagen in their diet. It can cause joint issues, gut-related issues, because your body is missing the building blocks it needs to regenerate. Mm -hmm. So whether someone's on a keto diet or any diet, they want to make sure they're getting collagen because it's the building blocks your body is using to regenerate and heal your gut, for one, your skin, all these different areas of the body. So I think getting collagen and other healthy proteins is important on keto. And in terms of carbohydrates, almost purely vegetables, maybe a few berries, but almost, you know, that's the other thing people are missing when they're doing keto. We should be getting lots of vegetables that are high in minerals, minerals or alkaline. And so that's how people follow more of the keto diet that's really going to help them not just lose weight. Now, people can follow a conventional keto and, and they will lose weight very quickly in body fat. But we also want to reduce inflammation. We want to turn around autoimmune disease. We want to heal your thyroid. We want to heal your adrenals. We want to heal your body. And, and that's how people need to do it if they're going to do it the right way. Mm. 
so with your the way that you do keto, do you do it as like a because you know I think there's two two trains of thought or two schools of thought with it that you would be keto for the rest of your life or do you think yours is like a temporary thing to kind of reset your hormones, reset your pancreas mm-hmm. or or what do you think? I think that the keto diet should be done for most people. I'm not saying everybody, mm-hmm. but for most people, like you would do a long term fast. Now, there are civilizations like the Eskimos and the Hunzas and others throughout civilization who live their whole lives on a keto diet. And some of them live to be over 100 years old. So somebody can do keto long term. But I think, think about this. The diet was founded or created originally, well, not originally, because this has actually been practiced for thousands of years. But in the 1920s, it was created to mimic fasting. So think about it the same way you would do a fast or a cleanse, or I would say a long-term fast. 30 days, 40 days, 90 days. And, and then you just go and rebalance out your, your macros. So for most people, including myself, I don't think the keto is a lifetime diet. Do it as a, as, a, as a fast, just like you'd cleanse or do that sort of thing to reset your body, help balance out your body. But for a lot of people, here, here's the thing. Different macronutrients stress different organ systems. So for instance, your liver and gallbladder deal with fat. Your kidneys and your stomach, and a little bit your liver, but most of your kidneys and stomach deal with protein digestion. Well, carb digestion, a large part of it, or most of it, is your pancreas. We overconsume of all the macronutrients, carbs the most by far. And so for a lot of people, your pancreas is the organ that needs the most rest. And this is an important principle that might surprise some people when I say this. No food heals you. Turmeric doesn't heal you. Rishi mushroom doesn't heal you. Vitamin D doesn't heal you. Broccoli and kale don't heal you. Your body heals itself. Your body will use these foods, these nutrients, these herbs for building blocks or to change the environment that allows your body to, gives your body what it needs to heal itself. But this is why fasting is so powerful is essentially your organs are always regenerating or trying to, but if it's working all the time, it never gets to regenerate. So when people go on a keto diet, for some people, it's the first time ever, their pancreas now is doing almost zero work. So now it regenerates, it balances insulin. And it's just really powerful for so many people because insulin gets balanced. So now every hormone in your body gets balanced. And there are other benefits of keto. When your body breaks down keto bodies, it's actually very good for your brain. Similar, similar benefits that you'd get when you're fasting. But I think that's, um, I think for most people, it's like a long-term fast, 30 to 90 days, not, not lifetime at all. Mm. We are so proud to be partnering with our next sponsor, Cured Nutrition. We've spoken about them once before, but I wanted to share their mission with you. They said, our locally sourced cannabinoid infused products have been engineered to transform any approach to wellness and promote a life altogether elevated. Um, Honestly, they care about you. They care about the planet. We are just so happy to be a part of what they are doing. They understand the importance of maintaining a strong sense of integrity in the pursuit of making a difference like this and creating a product like this. And it shows their products rock. Um, As you know, we're uh, obsessed with their cookie dough, which has CBD in it. CBD is considered non-psychoactive and will not get you high, um, but it's a cannabinoid. It's one of many natural compounds in the hemp plant with significant therapeutic medicinal benefits. I'm really loving put a few drops of the cured full spectrum raw hemp oil underneath my tongue before I go to bed every single night, sleep like a baby. Uh, And I also love cooking with my cured spices. So I use the cinnamon and honey for my lattes and for pancakes. And I also use the garlic roasted garlic and lemon pepper spice for everything else. It's just so damn good. It's infused with CBD. I want you guys to go to curednutrition.com and check out all of their products in their shop. They also have a really interesting blog, um, lots of educational material if you're wanting to learn more about CBD and how to use it. So curednutrition.com. You can use our code ALMOST30 for $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. So that's almost 30 A-L-M-O-S-T-3-0 for $10 off your purchase of $50 or more at curednutrition.com. Tell me this almost 30 nation, are you getting really good and enough sleep? 
Are you struggling with your sleep? I just want to tell you that one, you're not alone. Krista and I struggle with sleep sometimes and it is so frustrating and disheartening because it can affect our cognitive functions during the day, like learning, problem solving, decision making. It's just like, why? We have so much to do. How can we do it? And I don't know if you know, but one in three US adults doesn't get enough sleep. But a good night's sleep is like a magical remedy, as I'm sure you felt before. It really affects how your brain and body work. You're more focused and more relaxed and honestly, more happy or happier. So that's why we're partnering with Calm. They are the number one app for sleep. Sleep deficiency does some serious damage, not just to your brain, but to your body as well. So, you know, if you're sleepless, you're more prone to accidents, weight gain, and depression. And with Calm, you'll discover a whole insane library of programs designed to help you get the sleep your brain and body needs. One of my favorites, Soundscapes, is amazing. And there's over a hundred sleep stories narrated by soothing voices. Um, Like Jerome Flynn is one of my favorites. He's from Game of Thrones. Hello. Uh, Check it out. I really, I would love for you guys to try this. Let me know what you think. You can sleep better with Calm. So right now, almost 30 listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash almost 30. Listen to that. Calm, C-A-L-M dot com slash almost 30. You'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. And the pancreas is responsible for insulin, correct? Correct. Okay. So then when you're on keto, you give your pancreas a break. I'm just repeating to make sure you give your pancreas a break. And then insulin does, like what happens to insulin? Does it drop or like, is it able to rebalance itself to the right level? Or what is like actually happening to your insulin level when the pancreas isn't doing much work? What happens, your, your, your cells, you have insulin receptor sites that are you know, in your pancreas and, and in your body. And so you're, um, when you consume glucose, your body uh, to bring sugar inside the cells releases insulin. What happens over time with a lot of people is all these insulin, not insulin, but the receptor sites, it's like you're doing so many carbs. It's like somebody's screaming in your ear. Eventually you go deaf. The pancreas, these receptor sites kind of go deaf and they're, they no longer work. This is what happens in diabetes, yeah. essentially, uh, but they no longer work. And so that's, that's what happens is now these receptor sites get to regenerate and heal themselves. That's that, that's what happens. Oh, so the fasting time. or the keto, the ketogenic diet, so what else does it do to diseases, to cancer yeah. specifically so people can kind of make the connection? Yeah. Like what kind of environment does it you know, create so that it can't live anymore? Yeah, so, so a few things happen. So first talking about you're removing sugar from the diet. When you remove sugar, your body now... One thing happens is it starts to rearrange your gut microbes. And so different, a lot of people don't realize this either, but different types of microorganisms, everything from candida is a microorganism, you know, uh, certain bacterias like bifidobacterium or, or acidophilus, those are different bacterias, like different, uh, different, they feed off different things. Yeast, candida, love sugar. Mm-hmm. They love carbohydrates versus some of the bifidobacterium, which we should have from birth, and acidophilus, and those, you know, those t- sort of probiotics, they like uh, they, they like soluble fiber, they like found in chia seeds, those sort of things. So like, they like that in found in vegetables. So they just love feeding off that. So when you get on a keto diet the right way, all that candida and, and yeast starts to die because it doesn't have anything to feed off of. The, the thing is that when keto are doing people are doing keto the wrong way, all probiotics drop, good and bad. And so, and then their body's left a little more susceptible. When you do it the right way with all the vegetables and those sort of things, bad drops, good increases. And so it really changes the environment of your gut microbiome. In fact, there was a study, it was an animal study, but done on animals with ASD, autistic spectrum disorder. They found when they went on a keto diet, that behavior, uh, behavioral improvements were tremendous. Digestive health was tremendously improved. And so that's one thing is it changes your gut. The other thing is it does is it really helps with, with hormone balance. And the reason being you're balancing insulin because now pancreas can regenerate and insulin gets balanced, which balances progesterone, estrogen, 
melatonin, cortisol, all of these hormones start to rebalance themselves. Now, I do want to mention this, and sorry, I'm going on a few little tangents. I've heard people, um, one concern is for people with thyroid health uh, doing a keto diet. When, and specifically a women population, just generally speaking, women ha- have more sensitive hormones. They, there's a lot more of a fluctuation. So men don't very frequently have this issue. A lot of times it's been more females that I've worked with, but uh, somebody doing any diet, but especially keto, if their stress hormones are very, very high, a lot of times their body doesn't do as well on it. Because when you get cortisol off, your body still doesn't want to release body fat. I mean, emotional stress will cause people to store body fat and those cortisol levels get high. So one of the things I teach in my book, Keto Diet, as well is we got to get those cortisol levels down. Mm. You do that by reducing stress just with your lifestyle, whether it be meditation or yoga or prayer or taking walks in the park, scheduling Mm. actually you, Tom, where you get to heal and regenerate. But that's one way. And then other ways, using certain adaptogenic herbs in oil. CBD oil is fantastic for reducing a sympathetic response in your body. Uh, ashwagandha is fantastic, you know? So, you know, a lot of these herbs and things too really can, can help using lavender essential oil. But I think I think that's the other thing. The hormone balance can be a great benefit on a keto diet. But one thing you people do need to be aware of is, hey, where are my stress hormones? Mm-hmm. And also bringing those down the same time if you're going to do keto and having hormonal concerns. And the other thing is, it's amazing for your brain. I mean, I've seen such incredible yeah. results with patients with MS, with Alzheimer's. In fact, there's a great uh, story people can research online and uh, look up MS, coconut oil, medical doctor, Florida. I'm just saying that. That's <laughs> that, that, I, I know that they'll de- definitely find it that way because there, there's this amazing female medical doctor in Florida and her husband developed Alzheimer's early, very early stages. And she put him on what she called the coconut keto diet where he was doing the keto but it was the, what I'm, it's a lot of healing foods, but a lot of coconut. And she saw his symptoms completely regress and his brain start functioning. And so, and then I was recently on the Dr. Oz show and I was on there with um, this, the same, uh, the same show with a Montel Williams who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Yeah. And now he's full-time keto. He's seen amazing results wow. with it. So because your brain, it can function off carbs, but it loves ketone bodies. And so it actually helps. It gives your brain more fuel to regenerate nerve tissue. It really helps there too. But, you know, one of the things, anytime I'm creating programs, so again, keto, biggest benefits are typically metabolism and weight loss. It's brain and neurological health. It's hormone balancing and it's reducing inflammation when it's followed the right way. So just all being said, those are probably the biggest benefits for most people. Wow. So when it's not followed the right way, you yeah. risk, you know, cardiovascular I think so. disease and all of that. Yeah. And that's yeah. mainly with like, if people are doing cheese and bacon and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Do you have cheese on it? You know, I think doing raw organic, like sheep cheese, like whether it's manchego or something like that, or little buffalo mozzarella or grass fed butter or ghee, that type of dairy is fine. I don't recommend any milk products whatsoever. And especially conventional dairy. I mean, that's just not healthy for anybody. So again, hey, grass-fed butter and that type of thing a little bit, I think those are fine. Okay. No hate, but dairy's nasty. (laughs) (laughs) No hate for anyone listening, but dairy is absolutely (laughs) disgusting. Um, So so when talking about balancing hormones naturally, a lot of the women in our community and our audience are interested in balancing their hormones naturally, whether they've just gotten off of hormonal birth control or um, as they reach, you know, their mid to late thirties, what else besides the keto diet would you suggest for people to do? Yeah. And this is one of the things that I really laid out in my book, because whenever I'm just give you an example, like if somebody wants to do keto and they have, let's say hormone imbalance, I want to do everything I can keto, but then every other thing we can do to balance those hormones. So in the book, I actually have a keto plan for regenerating and healing the brain. Mm. I have a specific keto plan for cancer. And I have a keto plan again for hormones. So for, let's say, let's talk about pre and postmenopausal. It's a little bit mm-hmm. easier there. But for women between the ages of typically, you know, you know, 16 to 45 years old, I think that they can really benefit from um, herbs that support that progesterone estrogen balance. So Vitex, also known as Chasberry. Mm-hmm. That herb works very, very well. It was used uh, some in traditional Chinese medicine. I've been I, taking that. Yeah. yeah and I, I really like it. I think that's really, really effective. It's from for, Chase Berry, right? Chase Berry, uh-huh. The other thing is, um, and I think we're going to see this herb grow tremendously in popularity, 
One of the five most herbs used in Chinese medicine that we don't really use much in the United States today is called Dong Kwai. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. And, and Dong Kwai mm-hmm. is known as the ultimate blood builder. There are a lot of women struggling with anemia, B vitamin issues, energy issues, and just overall, they don't have strongly built blood and red blood cells, especially if, you know, irregular menstrual cycles or heavy bleeding. Every woman that's struggling with that should be doing Dong Kwai you know, for a few weeks a month because it really, it actually tastes like iron because it's the mm-hmm. most, it's known as nature's iron supplement or mm-hmm. blood builder. But Dong Kwai is also called female ginseng. And so if a woman has low energy, Dong Kwai, when you build and strengthen your blood, I mean, people sometimes, I mean, just can tell, they, they feel like a different person. And so I think Vitex and the Dong Kwai are two that are just amazing, especially for young women. And then I think the other adaptogenic herbs, I think ashwagandha. Now, I don't want to get too off track. I'm trying to think like my head's going in all these different directions. <laughs> no, you're want, doing great. I just want to give you an example of like, <laughs> yeah, of, of what this, uh, of, of what this might, you know, k- kind of look like for some women. But in Chinese medicine, and when I first heard some of these terms a long time ago, I thought those sound a little bit out there, like yin and yang and chi. But um, I started realizing it's a different language. In fact, of all the yeah. forms of mm-hmm. medicine, I think traditional Chinese medicine is the most effective and the most accurate. And the easiest, yeah. e- easiest to apply to our bodies. And I think Ayurveda is amazing as well. But you know, w- when you look at a woman with hypothyroidism, for example, it's known as y- low chi and low yang in the body. And ashwagandha is the best herb in the world at building those things. Very, very good. But, but, but also, so for, for a lot of females in particular as well, we've all heard this, but it, it's a lot of adrenal issues. Now they'd call that kidney chi in Chinese medicine, but it's a lot of adrenal issues recharging those, getting a really good night's sleep, lowering the stress hormones is a really big deal. But that's mm-hmm. why ashwagandha is so effective at that. And holy basil and his tulsi is pretty good too. Rhodiola. Uh, rhodiola is good, mm-hmm. bacopa. But you know, those are some of my favorites for younger women. And if a woman is over 45 or postmenopausal, black cohosh, probably the most effective uh, herb for balancing hormones. Mm. Why would just going back to the anemia? I I'm slightly anemic, and I don't know why. Like, why would a woman be anemic? Well, a lot of times it's uh it's a deficiency um, in the body of foods that build blood, just plain and simple. And so, and and let me get, let me put this into perspective too. Let's compare the United States to the rest of the world, or some of the healthiest areas in the world. Uh, according to a, a study I read, this is many years ago, but our herb consumption, our herb spice consumption and antioxidant consumption compared to Okinawa, Japan is one eighth. If you go into a market or someone's home in the Middle East, in India, in Asia, it smells like herbs and spices. You go into a grocery store or a home in America, it smells like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like we, we're getting, when I use the term food is medicine as the tagline on my website, it's most true for herbs and spices. In fact, if we compare the nutrient density and the medicinal effects of turmeric, cinnamon, even rosemary and cilantro, they blow broccoli and kale out of the water. I'm not saying broccoli and kale aren't great, but turmeric and cinnamon and rosemary are so much more powerful at healing our bodies than even those vegetables. And so we're not getting enough herbs and spices. So I think even talking about anemia and these other countries, they're drinking these herbal teas. They're drinking a lot of these things that help strengthen and build the blood or the spleen they would call in different organs. And so I think specifically doing these two, these two herbs would be very effective. But again, Dong Kwai, it's the ultimate blood builder. And a lot of women in Asia consume Dong Kwai on a regular basis. And then astragalus is is, is good too for building that area. And then certain other foods, you know, liver is, was known as uh, nature's B vitamin, your, your, your natural B complex vitamin in nature. And so we don't eat organ meats anymore. If you would go into, let's say 50 years ago, you would have gone into a health food store in the US, but also in Asia. Everything in the store would have been herbs and glandulars. So like liver and thyroid, I mean, that's what they would use because in Chinese medicine, when you consume a food that is from the organ of, of another animal or a food that looks like an organ, Mm. It was known to heal that area. For instance, you know, like we know this through medical research. Carrots are amazing from your eye. Cut a carrot in half, literally looks like like an eye. You know, wow. like the circles there. A walnut looks like a hemisphere of your brain. Wow, identical. Reishi mushroom. Google it online. Reishi mushroom. It looks identical to your kidney, which is where your adrenal sits. Which reishi is known as the ultimate adrenal tonic. Wow. And so it's a very similar thing. When you consume liver, people are worried. Well, the liver doesn't hold toxins. So so people. 
the liver is a filter, actually. That's what it does is it gets rid of toxins. So all that being said, I think the other thing is we're missing animal meats, which are the best, biggest blood builders like liver and heart in our diets today. You know, we're not getting necessarily a lot of red meat in our diet, which is another blood builder. Green leafy vegetables are weak to moderate blood builders, not near as strong as the red meat, but the strongest of blood builders are going to be herbs like Don Kwai and Astragalus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a fruit called like longum fruit or something. It's in Chinese medicine. Mm-hmm. It's like a blood builder and it's like a berry yep. and it actually tastes like blood. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh. It's, yeah. It's, that's yeah. a good one too. It's good. It's good. <laughs> but it, you, when you think about it, like because you're like, oh, this is iron building, it like tastes like blood. Like, it, oh. it, it really does. <laughs> yeah, it does. And then uh, there's there's another one, peony, which is very, yeah. very you know, which which is very good there too. But um, yeah, but we're just we're not getting any of them, you yeah. know. So it's uh, it, it affects us. The spices thing is really kind of blowing my mind because mm-hmm. if you do think about like Indian cuisine or something yes. like that, I mean, the amount of spices that they Ooh. use is like. So so there there is a term. And I made this up, but I guarantee someone else made it up before me. But in Ayurvedic medicine, I always call it meals or medicine. The way that they thought in Ayurveda yeah. was, if I combine this herb with this spice, it's going to have this effect on the body. For instance, in Indian cuisine, they would never consume dairy without a bitter herb and a warming spice. Here's the reason. It, mm. Dairy is very dampening to the body. And most people in America are already very damp. It's what causes candida overgrowth. When you think dampness, think yeast, think snot and phlegm or mucus. Mm-hmm. Like we have a lot of people have that throughout their digestive tracts, which decreases nutrient absorption, makes our body sick. Okay. And so we want to change that environment. And you do that through consuming bitter foods. That's the other thing. So we consume almost all sweet and salty. We get almost no bitter and very little sour. Herbs are bitter. They dry up dampness. And so we were talking about earlier, like one of the biggest side effects of birth control is yeast overgrowth in candida. A lot of women have serious skin issues, acne issues once they get off mm-hmm. birth control. In fact, I think there's more women that get on birth control for yeah. acne than for I agree. actual birth control. Yeah. And I had a, a family member who she got off of it and just the, you know, the chronic acne was so bad. But, you know, and when I work with patients with that, I just saw amazing results when we loaded them up on probiotics, we got rid of the sugar, but then we went really, really high on doing certain types of herbs and spices and the diet was, um, it was another big thing that really, you know, really helped But the bitterness. It's that bitterness that dries up that dampness and that candida that's caused post birth control or for when people are consuming a lot of these, these dampening foods. Wow. Mm. For the listeners that, you know, since sugar is a big component of, you know, being keto, so it's like no sugar, how, how does someone identify or kind of break a sugar addiction if they have one? Yeah. So I think it's all about changing your environment. Let's talk about why do we have a sugar addiction? It's related to your gut brain connection. And so here, here's what happens. Now this is, so here's what happens. We have candida and yeast in our body. There's so much of it. They're, they're telling you, I want more. And another thing happens in our body though, that another part of our cells in our body is saying, our pancreas and spleen are suffering those organs. So they're saying, we are overwhelmed, we're exhausted, we need help, we need nutrients. Those two things in the body happening are both saying, I want sweetness. Right. Because sweetness actually does nourish the pancreas, but it, you, can, you can overdo it with sugar. Mm-hmm. When, when your pancreas wants sweetness, it's saying, I want cinnamon and pumpkin, not high fructose corn syrup and, and white flour pizza and potato chips. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're going off there. So all that being said... We need to calm those systems down, and we also need to get other flavors in our diet. So I found when we get off the sugar and we start do, giving it the right sweet things like cinnamon, that helps in a major way. And I think also when you have sour and bitter foods, it actually starts to eliminate your reliance on sweet flavors as well. So I think mm-hmm. that I think that those things help. But uh, and then consuming a lot of probiotics, you know, get once you start starving off the the candida, you've got to replace it with something. That's where a lot of people don't do it either. You've really got to take probiotic supplements and, you know, hey, get some sauerkraut and some other probiotic rich foods in the diet. But but I, but when people do keto the right way, it really will break a sugar addiction because they will stay full as well. When you consume moods, foods that are mostly fat, fiber, and protein, that's what keeps you feeling full, not the carbohydrates like long-term. And so I think when you follow the keto diet the right way, take some of the right, you know, supplements with it, and then, hey, if you want some sweetness, do a little stevia, do a little monk fruit, don't go overboard. But, 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 but most of the time, people can break the addiction that way. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, I'm declaring it right here and now in front of all of you because I want to hold myself accountable. I am done with buying cheap basics, cheap underwear, cheap socks. I don't know why I'm buying cheap shit to touch the most intimate parts of my body. Okay. I deserve better. You deserve better. I'm sure I'm not alone here. I would like to see the inside of your sock or underwear drawer. Okay. But I'm really excited because I have been introduced and Krista has been introduced to Pair of Thieves. Pair of Thieves does it right. They're uber comfortable, men's underwear, women's underwear, socks and undershirts, everything, everything that you need to just feel comfy and supported. And especially for women, their bralettes, holy hell, ladies, the comfort and support is insane. Uh, No underwire and the proprietary fabrics keep you sweat. I'm hoping this serves as just a gentle reminder because I'm sure you were thinking about getting new underwear and socks and whatnot. So go to parafeeves.com slash almost 30 and then use the code almost 30 for 20% off your first purchase. I am loving the mega soft thong. Uh, and I also am just super obsessed with their bralettes. I love the triangle and the scoop actually. The scoop is what I'm wearing right now and I have it in uh, their mega soft triangle bralette insanely comfortable. I don't even know what to say. So let me know what you think. DM us. Let us know what you got. Super cute patterns. Their website is dope. Check it out. Parafees.com slash almost 30 and then use the code almost 30 at checkout for 20% off. Lately, there is nothing I am more proud of than creating a space that I am just so happy to live in. You know, Article has made it so much easier to design a space that is chic and modern and really smart. I'm super into storage right now. So I'm currently perusing their storage section. I'm eyeing the BIOS sideboard. Um, I'm also loving the Envelope Media unit. I'm trying to put my cable box somewhere because it's ugly. Uh, Listen, Article is super affordable. You can't even argue with it. They take out the middleman. These pieces are our Scandinavian design. I just love it so much. It's online only. They don't have like the showrooms and all of that stuff. And they're really, really serious about shipping. So no matter how many items, every order is shipped at a flat rate of $49. You cannot beat that, y'all. And in-stock items can be expected in two weeks or less, which is not the norm. Normally, it's like 85 weeks. Um, And they have a 30-day return policy. So good. So if you'd like to try Article, go to article.com slash almost 30 and you'll get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. So that's article.com slash almost 30 to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. I have recently turned a lot of my coffee-loving friends on to the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee Latte, which has some coconut milk powder in there to make it super creamy and delicious. So you'll find adaptogens like chaga and maitake in this particular mix. And honestly, it really helps to balance out the kick of the coffee. I love it so much. I have it every morning. Um, And I'm also loving their new superfood protein. So I'm always looking for a really great protein. We get a lot of them. Um, This one stands out as it has adaptogens in it. They really know how to do it right. So proteins like this are great for helping to rebuild and repair muscle after a workout. And as you know, we just like to keep it plant-based for the most part. Things on foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. We'd love to know what you're using. They even have skincare. What? Foursigmatic.com slash almost 30 will bring you to our landing page. And from there, after you've filled your card a little bit, use our code almost 30 for 15% off your first order. So that's four sigmatic, F O U R sigmatic.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 for 15% off. What other things that we were doing, say, in our, you know, when we were younger, antibiotics, you know, when we're in our teens, birth control, things like that, that you are seeing now that we have to really work on to reverse some of the effects that it's had? Yeah. Well, you mentioned antibiotics. Like, I grew up in a household to where. Same. Yeah. Hey, you're sick. Yeah. There's one thing you take, and it's antibiotics. And it's so crazy because most of a lot of times things are viral. Sometimes things are fungal. I mean, antibiotics don't do anything to a virus. In fact, it weakens your immune system. So now the virus will be there longer. 
It happens a lot of times with kids with ear infections is a great example. So a lot of us are totally bankrupt in the right type of good bacteria. And then not only are we bankrupt, but then we have all of this other stuff taking up room, all of these bad bacteria. So we really want to be conscious about getting good bacteria, both food-based probiotics and soil-based probiotics. Now we get some food-based probiotics in, again, sauerkraut, kombucha, you know, kefir, yogurt, those types of things. So we're getting some good bacteria there. Some people do. We get almost zero soil-based probiotics. So like throughout history, up until really a hundred years ago, you know what everybody did? They went to their local market. They, they bought from a farmer's market or the local market where people got the food that day. They put it out there and it wasn't sprayed with chlorine. You know, there was dirt on your carrots. You'd go home, maybe wash them off. But even today, like if you go and maybe to your farmer's market, you'll buy carrots and there are these little brown specks embedded in there, right? You know, mm-hmm. even after you buy them and wash them, those are called soil-based organisms that actually help you break down and digest your food. And they are, they're like bulldozers that clear out candida and bad bacteria out of the body, making way for more good bacteria to grow in mm. your system. Today, most people literally get zero soil-based probiotics in their diet, but you want the food-based too. But the soil-based are even more important. And if you're not going to be eating from your local farmer's market or growing in your own garden and getting some of these soil-based organisms, you want to take a soil-based probiotic supplement. So people could just Google search. And I've written articles on this before. People could look up SBO probiotic, Dr. Axe or something like that. But I've written on it. I've talked about it. But they want to take those types of probiotics. And not to get on too much. Okay, I'm just going to talk about this for just like 30 (laughs) seconds. but, But here's the other thing. Like, People a lot of times are turning to getting injections to try and take care of their immune system today. I have other thoughts on that. I actually think a lot of times it's it's really not helping. It could be the opposite effect. But we were created to be building our immune systems naturally. And part of it is we've all heard like honey, right? Like local, why buy raw local honey for allergies? Like a lot of us have heard that. Well, because what happens is local honey Mm. contains over 200 microbes where you're getting a micro dose of an exposure to something in your region, in your area. So like I'm in Nashville and there are, there's different pollen and there's different things, invaders that affect my immune system compared to, you know, LA and California. And so for me, like raw local honey with all these microbes, if people are eating it year round, like it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Like people will, when, when they already have an allergy, they start taking raw local honey mm. It may work a little bit, but really you're doing it year round to build up like a micro a tolerance to all the other pollen that you're going to get later on. What's well, the same thing with SBO probiotics is you are getting microbes that are found in the soil. You're getting these micro doses that help build up your immune system to prepare your body for different things that are going to happen during the year. But, but building our, our own immune systems, our immune systems should be built to being exposed to other people who aren't well. And hey, your kids get chicken pox, fantastic. Now you have a greater chance of fighting off shingles and all these other things that can affect your immune system later on. And then the SBO probiotics, the raw local honey, having a pet, you know, or being on a farm. Like actually there are great studies on if you have a dog, it's awesome for immune system because they're bringing in things that are in the environment. Mm. You're getting the micro dose exposure, which slowly builds your immune system Mm. over time. But it's like a, it's literally like a natural immunization when you have these exposures. Mm. I've been thinking a lot lately, just on that note, like about like if we're lucky enough to have kids and, you know, like do we, one, the vaccinations, two, just like antibiotics in general, you know? Yeah, it's so if, heated. If, I know it's heated. You don't it's, have to give us your we're opinion. We're not even going to, it's like so heated, I know. It's, which I don't but even I think understand. about it, antibiotics it, too. I don't want, I, I mean, we don't even, it's, I don't understand why it's so heated, but do people get hot? Uh, it's, it's unreal. It really is. I just don't, un- I don't know how I, like, I don't want to based on yeah. everything that we're talking about right now, but then I'm like, well, these I, little. but you know, like I'll, I'll say this, at least for the, the antibiotic thing, it's so out of control and ridiculous. I mean, again, it's one of those things where I think if somebody's sick, you know, for one, a lot of times it's a virus. It's insane. Like you are doing so much harm to the body. I actually, there's a study, people can look this up, antibiotic use cancer study. There are studies showing you take an antibiotic, it increases your risk of cancer. Even one round of antibiotics increase your risk of cancer. Why is that? Well, th- just logically, hey, get, people need to get all of their their biases out of the way 
and just you that's all I ask people to do. Just start using common sense. Think about it. You take a synthetic antibiotic, what's it do? It kills bad, it kills good, okay? And it decreases both. And the other thing it does is you actually, sometimes you're killing off species that you will never get back. That's the other thing. Like we want to have a large amount, a great diversity of probiotics that you never get back. So you're weakening your assistant, your immune system with these antibiotics. You're giving yourself a greater risk for things like Lyme disease. You're at greater risk of viral infections, greater risk of fungal infections, greater risk of parasitic infections. Mm. Any and every time you take an antibiotic, and there again, there are studies on the side effects of antibiotics. And um, I mean, that one is in particular that now almost every doctor of functional medicine or integrative medicine would agree with me on this. It is out of control and should probably be used about two. Now, again, there's a place in time, right? There's mm-hmm. absolutely a place in time for antibiotics. If somebody has, you know, a serious flesh wound or, you know, it's overused probably 95% of the time. Yeah. I need to understand why it's so charged. I guess mm-hmm. I, I don't know why, and I need to understand why that and vaccinations are so charged, but I've seen a lot of thoughts on it and I'm not really understanding why exactly people feel so emotionally attached to the, to the, to well, the topic. Well, I can tell you that there's a few reasons. One is uh, it, it involves a lot of mothers. And so mothers are making a, a decision on vaccination for their kids. Yeah. And so I yeah, just, it's I, almost like I, saying I, you're I, a bad mom. Exactly. Yeah. And so if somebody mm-hmm. feels like somebody is, yeah. oh, you shouldn't have done yeah. Yeah. people take it very, very personally. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Kind of switching topics, I just wanted to ask this. This is my last question. A lot of our girls have been talking about um, strength versus cardio. Yeah. And I know it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to remove, you know, do one or the other, but I'd kind of like to explore that idea and like what people should be thinking about when they're looking at the two. Yeah. So in my opinion, I think both strength and cardiovascular health are important. And I also believe mobility and stability are very important too. So, you know, so I think that for most people, we we should try and get both. I just, I I think that the way that people go about cardiovascular health though, isn't necessarily the best way. I think if somebody's going out for 10 minutes, 15 minutes where they're getting pretty out of breath, that's what we should be looking for. Like long-term exercise on the treadmill, I, I don't think it's not the fastest way and most effective way to get fit and healthy. I think if somebody's going to do something, hey, get 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 on whatever device you want or get outside and do a little bit of interval training, okay? And you don't have to do high impact on your joints to do that. You could do, you know, hey, elliptical is fine. It's a spin bike is fine or actually cycling outside, but do some intervals. Science has shown this. I mean, it's pretty obvious that interval cardio is much healthier for you in terms of cortisol, in terms of actually the results you're going to see. Doing it, that, you know, going hard 30 seconds and, seconds and then easy 30 seconds, like those intervals is more effective. And then doing weights. I think if people want to know what's the most effective way to get fit fast, let's say you have, I don't know, 45 minutes. Do 30 minutes of weights, 15 minutes of interval training and, and do that. Or hey, 25 minutes wait, 15 minutes of interval training and do five minutes or, or hey, if you have an hour or however long, but then do a little yoga or stretching or mobility or sort of balance stuff. You know, holding some of those yoga poses at the end is fantastic for people. But I'm a big fan of, you know, doing variety of workouts. But I think most people, ideally, you're going to do more weights, just a little bit of short-term cardio as intervals, and then work, you know, on, on some like, like yoga moves. Mm-hmm. You've mentioned prayer a few times. I'd love to know kind of what part like your faith has played in sure. your practice and you know how just the belief of something much greater or what we were talking about before with the mind-body connection can really help people to heal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for me and my, my, my faith was a big part of both growing up. It's a mm-hmm. big part of who I am today. So I'm very outspoken. I'm a, I'm a Christian and I spent a lot of time reading the Bi- Bible, prayer and meditation and so, um, uh, you know, for me, like, I think that people thrive when they have a hope and a purpose. And I want to kind of correlate this with, with even physical health, too. There are actually studies that have shown if you tell somebody they have cancer, whether they have it or not, not having it, or if you tell somebody they have three months to live, they'll die three months later. I mean, what we, what we and the, the sad thing is that the medical community, for the most part, they strike fear into people. Fear is one of the most negative emotions you can have, especially mm-hmm. for your adrenals and your reproductive organs mm-hmm. and health. Our emotions, every emotion we have 
affects our organ in, in, a, in a very specific way. So for instance, this is Chinese medicine, but the emotion of fear. So think about it, if a child gets really scared, they can wet themselves, right? If, you guys heard, if the child gets really scared at night or has a nightmare, they'll, they'll wet themselves. Well, why that organ? Why wet themselves? It's the emotion of fear causes dysfunction of the kidneys, the, the adrenals, the bladder, and reproductive organs. But let's go a little further. Let's say a man or woman, I'll, I'll give you an example with a woman of infertility. If, well, I've found, I've had women I took care of in the past in my practice who they had infertility because they had so much fear in their life, fear of disappointing mm. their spouse, fear of disappointing their parents, fear of failure, all these different things in life. And, and the same thing goes with every emotion. Anger and frustration and unforgiveness causes disease in the, in the liver. So think about like, why do we call somebody an angry drunk? Why is anger and alcohol? Those things are, are, those things are connected. The emotion of grief and depression affects the lungs and the colon. I had a mom once who, her, her and her daughter were best friends. Her daughter moved pretty far away off to college. And then her mom developed autoimmune disease we, we connected it back to it because she felt like she had lost. She was still grieving for her daughter. The emotion of, of anxiety affects your central nervous system and your heart, causing high blood pressure. We, we know that, right? Stress, blood pressure can raise with anxiety. And then the emotion of worry. You ever heard somebody studying, but they get an upset stomach because they're continually worrying about things? Yeah. Because the emotion of worry specifically affects your upper GI, your pancreas, and spleen and stomach. So all that being said, we know that our emotional and mental state affects our physical health in, 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 in a huge way. So all that being said, I'm really big about, even for my mom, creating and knowing I have a purpose. So people that don't believe in God, I'm just saying, I think this is, it's harder because when you don't, like, like, like what's your purpose then? If there's, so for me, like my purpose is um, making, making earth more like heaven, you know, creating something where, you know, people's needs are met, people are acting in love and caring for each other and, so, so I have a very distinct purpose for my life, and it's um, loving others and making their lives better. And, that, 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 and so knowing that I have that purpose makes me operate in a very specific way. So like even, even from a financial standpoint, when I'm earning an income, I'm a big part of me earning an income isn't just, hey, getting a nicer house, house for Chelsea and I. It's more thinking, okay, like right now, like Chelsea and I are partnered with a ministry uh, who, who they're doing regenerative agriculture in um, Mozambique, Africa. And so, um, and then another one in, U- in Uganda that we're working with. So, and, and so for me, like, I don't just want to teach somebody to fish or give them a fish. I want to teach, I want to, you know, teach them to fish so they can feed themselves for a lifetime. So we're working with them, helping them create farms. So now all these people have, ju- so all that being said, like when I earn money, I'm not, uh, 99% of people aren't thinking like that. Like, so for me, like, Hey, creating wealth is all about going and giving to these ministries and seeing like we work with a lot of sex trafficking groups and things like that um, to, to rescue girls. And, and so that being said, like, I think that people a lot of times aren't thinking enough about what am I here for? What's my purpose? And I think for me, like I wake up excited, you know, in the mornings knowing what I do matters, you know, and I think for a lot of people, they're not even connected, but that's important for health, like that we have a purpose and we have a hope. And so for me, like, even when I worked with patients, I never just said, eat this food or, hey, just take this single supplement. It was very comprehensive. And I had my patients create vision boards and goal setting. Mm-hmm. And I had them start thinking about who you hang around with because, you know, who you hang around with, somebody could be sabotaging your diet and your success, or you could have an encourager, someone who's loving you, spurring you on to be better. That person matters. It's in your life. And so all that being said, like I start off my mornings with like a spiritual triathlon. And so I start off my first five minutes are being grateful and just praising God like, Sometimes I'll sing, sometimes I'll whatever, you know, but I have my vision board and I'll look at that and just say everything I'm grateful for. And I'm so grateful for my wife, Chelsea. I'm so grateful for our two dogs. And I'm so grateful for my physical health. I'm so grateful for, you know, the friends you put in my life. So I spend the first five minutes doing that. The next five minutes, I'll read something. And, um, you know, I typically read the Bible or maybe it's a personal growth book or devotional. And then I'll spend the next five minutes sort of in visualization, meditation or prayer, sort of talking with God or also thinking about, I just read this principle on forgiveness. And then I'll think to myself, is there really someone I haven't forgiven yet? And if Mm -hmm. so, what do I need to take? What sort of action? And so sometimes it's 50 minutes, sometimes it's an hour. I mean, it just depends on what my morning looks like. But I do my spiritual triathlons in the morning. And I notice like when I do those, I'm so much more conscious about it's not about me. It's it's about, you know, I'm here to 
serve and love, love others and help people grow. And just go on my tangent, probably three more seconds. Yeah, but, um, go for it. I think a lot of personal growth guru, gurus get it wrong. A lot of them, it's all about your, how do I grow myself? It's personal growth. When you focus on growing yourself, it's not the most effective way. It's your focus on loving and supporting others in their growth. Like we, Chelsea and I read a book, Meaning of Marriage, a few years ago. And the book was all about what's our job as a spouse. It's helping your spouse achieve their dreams, making them better, supporting that. Like, so like, hey, if Chelsea wants to, you know, she doesn't want to do this probably, but if she wants to become a professional, uh, you know, like a paddle boarder, we love paddle boarding, mm-hmm. but so I, don't, I don't think she actually wants to be a professional paddle boarder. But that being said, like, I'm going to do everything I can, not about me, but she, I'm going to do everything I can to see her support her dreams and, and encourage her and love her and meet her needs and take out the garbage and do whatever I need to do to like support her and achieving her dreams. But I think that's a big thing if, is I read an article once on Mother Teresa on why she was so happy. And she mm-hmm. said it was because that's what she does is she focuses on meeting the needs of others. And that ultimately is what leads to happiness. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed a change in my partner, Justin, just like that shift from, and I had this realization this year before it was like, he was there for me to um, not just support me, but to be someone I love, to be my partner, to be someone I enjoyed my time with. But then I realized this year that I am there for like to him, to help him be the best person he can be, to help him achieve his dreams. And like, it is my job and my role to like assist him in that, you know, just as I would my friends. Yeah. So that's such a beautiful thing. And thank you so much for sharing that. That was lovely. Um, And we completely agree. Can you tell us about your book? Yeah. So my uh, my new book just released this week. It's called Keto Diet. And I really go through how to do the keto diet the right way. And I have specific plans in there for, again, a keto plan for cancer. So if people know somebody with cancer, I really think... I go through my whole mom's mm-hmm. plan, like what wow. she ate for every meal, every supplement she took, the essential oils, the whole thing, the keto plan for hormone balance. I've got a keto plan for boosting collagen and beauty. I've got a keto plan for vegans. I have a keto plan for like an advanced keto plan. And uh, also we have 80 recipes and the recipes are really good. We have like keto pancakes made with coconut flour and almond flour, keto Mm. blueberry muffins, keto fudge, keto brownies. So we have a lot of really great recipes in the book too. And, um, and again, we have, we, we laid out a 30 day plan. So people know every last thing to take from the supplements to the foods, to other tips on getting into ketosis faster. So really excited about it. It's keto diet can be found nationwide. It's actually on sale this week in Barnes and Noble. They have it twenty percent off. I think for this next uh, next week or so only. It's on Amazon. It's kind of all over the place, local bookstores. But yeah, excited about that. And I also wanted to say too. I mentioned my wife a couple of times. She's got a great Instagram page. I yeah. do too. She's a yoga instructor and she's a doctor and she's a anyways. She does a lot with like beauty and skincare mm-hmm. and hormone mm-hmm. balance. And so she's she's a great person to follow. She's Doctor Chelsea Axe on Instagram and I'm Doctor Josh Axe on Instagram. But those are probably the uh, Best places to follow me. I want to say too, you guys are great interviewers. This was a, this oh, was a lot of fun. fun. Thank you. So. Oh, I appreciate it. It's. I was thinking when you were talking, it's so nice to talk to someone that's so passionate. Yeah. Like it is, always. it is infectious when, and it is, and it's a lot because of God, but it's a really, it's just, it's so nice to see someone that is great at what they do, but also very passionate about what they do. Nice. You know, it's like such a relief you know, to know that you found your path and that you're doing it and you're doing it so well and you're helping other people. So, And it's such a good reminder for not only our listeners, but anyone who feels like they don't really have that passion or purpose, Mm. you know, that like where they are doesn't have to be where they are forever, you know, and and to seek that is like totally possible. So yeah. And to focus on service, you know, such a good one. Yeah. Yeah, We should have Chelsea on if she's ever in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Next time we're in town, uh, she should love to. Oh, that would be great. I can't wait to meet her. Couple goals. Couple goals. (laughs) All right. We got the handles, everything like that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm excited to read the keto book with Mm y'all. So see you later. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much to Dr. Axe. Yeah, thank you to their team too, have been amazing with helping us with the Nashville event. We cannot wait for that this September. Yeah, September 19th, 6.30 to 8.30. You can grab tickets on almost30podcast.com slash tour. Cannot wait to meet you. Okay, review of the week. 
Thank you, five stars. Krista and Lindsay, thank you so much for this beautiful podcast. It has helped me feel so much less alone with my interest in holistic healing, spirituality, and all of the other amazing topics talked about. And in turn, hearing your conversations with each other has helped me manifest similar friendships in my own life whom I can talk to about these types of things. We are what we consume. And listening to this podcast every week and being a part of this community has been changing my life and making me feel so understood. Thanks for spreading that high vibe conscious love and ladies love you both that's from tori love you t thank you thanks. so much thanks lady appreciate that so much so those reviews just mean a lot to us so appreciated to join our tour go to almost 30 podcast.com slash events to follow us on follow us on instagram go to almost 30 podcast we post memes and funny stuff and there's tons of giveaways all the time and then um i'm 100 blog on instagram and i'm at Lindsay Simsick. So we'd love to chat with you. We get DMs all the time and it is us, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it is us answering. <laughs> Not on almost 30 podcasts. <laughs> well, that, well, me half the time. We all, Chloe. We dip in there. <laughs> um, but we love hearing from you. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time. 